Alright guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to change the impeller and the housing for the impeller. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do to cut down on the weight, since the propeller is a little heavy, I'm going to take out the propeller to make it easier to remove the outdrive. Alright, to start with, we have to remove these three bolts here. And on the other side, three bolts here. And I'm going to show you there's another bolt in here that needs to be removed, but that's going to be the last one. Now, since this wrench doesn't have any room to remove this bolt, I got this little one. It's a lot easier to remove those bolts. Now that I got six of those bolts out, out of the out drive, now there's one more bolt. And the only way to get to it is removing this cap here and removing the anode and through here there's one last bolt now we're going to tilt the engine up okay you see that bolt right there that's going to be the last one and the outdrive will be able to be removed and be careful because this is the last bolt that holds the outdrive be careful this doesn't drop on you now this bolt is a lot longer than the other six bolts so remember this is the longer bolt now you always have to make sure that the engine is neutral not on forward or reverse it has to be in neutral so right now very important this is loose already so we're going to pull it all the way straight back there we go there it is now that the outdrive is out, inspect everything here. Everything is good. Now I set the lower unit between two boxes, pinch it to the ground. That way I can work with it and it's not going to tilt anywhere. All right, to start with, we're going to move four these bolts. We'll move the housing, been there for a little while. There we go. 260 hours. Let's see how it looks. Oh, wow. It really has some damage to it. Look at all the scoring here. So it's losing some pressure. Definitely because of this. The way we're going to install the impeller has to be the same way of this one. Can't be the other way around. Has to be this way. Now I'm going to remove this stainless steel part here. This is the best way to remove it that I found. There it is. Now this is a little plastic, which you'll see has a little opening right there. Just remove it. Should come out fairly very easy. Now here there's three washers. Two flat ones and one wavy. The one wavy is going to be right in the middle. That's the wavy one. And the other two are just flat. Now we can remove the impeller. Now look at the impeller. How it's losing pressure. This little corners are here, already worn out completely. And look at the new one. So if I don't have a smooth surface from the top, bottom, and the side, I'm losing pressure on cooling. Uh, that's why I've been losing probably a little bit of pressure. You can tell there. So I'm not getting a good seal on that pump. See how flexible this one is? This one's very stiff. This is already shaped in into the housing and this one's more flexible. Now the next thing we're going to remove is the Woodrow key, but I'm going to put some WD-40 there because this has been there for a little while. I never changed it. The Woodrow key is very hard to take out because it looks like it's really rusted inside the uh, shaft there. I want to tell you something. I've been working on this Woodrow key. I heat it up a little bit, not too much. Just heat it up a little bit, WD-40, I drilled it. Still trying to take it out. This motor only has 390 hours. And this Woodrow key is impossible. It's welded in into the shaft. This is something that Yamaha really ate the ball on this. I usually don't complain about the outboard of Yamaha of anything, but the Woodrow key, they really dropped the ball on this. 
been working already one hour on this. Ah, right, guys, look at this. I had to drill it all the way to the back. This is the new one. And drilling this stainless steel is really, really hard to drill. It's the hardest part of the uh, changing the impeller if you're going to change this. So now we're going to remove the steel plate. I have a new one. Now I'm also going to remove this rubber here and clean it out. Look at all that. Look at all that build up. Now I gotta flip the uh, drive to get that out of there. Okay, now I'm gonna clean this up so we can reuse it. Next time I do this again, I'm going to replace this part right here. I'm going to clean this here. This is the salt environment really working at the very soft metals to help it a little bit I'm gonna use some of this grease grease this up help it uh, from getting all that salt environment so it lasts a little longer and I'll replace this part on the other 200 hours this is gonna protect it there's not a, a lot of current of water going through here so this grease is going to stay here a little bit on this part. I really don't know why Yamaha makes this so brittle. They must have a reason why. Alright, that's in. Now we're going to get some grease on this side here too. I'm going to place a rubber gasket here. Okay, I'm going to remove both of these pins. Okay, before I put these new pins, I'm going to get some grease and grease them up a little bit, tap them a little bit. Now clean a little bit around here if you see any gasket residue from the last gasket. Now we're going to get the new gasket. Now we're going to get the new gasket and install it. Now we're going to get the plate. Uh, the plate goes down if you see this indentation. The indentation goes down. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of grease here. It's very little for the new impeller to slide a little bit. Now to prevent that Woodrow key to get locked up pretty good. And there, I'm going to put some grease on it. Make it easier. It'll get easier to remove it in the future. I'm going to put this plastic here. That way I don't scratch up the plate. This. All right, that's in. Perfect. 
now I'm gonna install the impeller and you can mess this up because the Woodrow key goes through here there's no entry from here so you just gotta put it down exactly like that there we go fits right into place bring it down remember the three washers one wavy in the middle I'm gonna put a little dab of grease I'm gonna put this plastic ring and now the stainless steel ring that goes right over it now I'm gonna use this wrench then I'm gonna tap it softly get it in there now I got the new housing and also I have this new inner stainless steel housing and I'm gonna use the top a little bit of a grease put this o-ring in there now you see this little indentations here you gotta look for that little hole that falls into place like this here where the mouth is open this is where the water is gonna be flowing through there too now to proceed I use this other gasket, put a little bit of grease so it holds it in place. Alright, so we get the gasket, install it exactly right where the channel goes. Alright, we put a little bit of dab of grease right here where this is gonna go. prevent from the future problems all right now this spins to the right say this way and then now you're gonna put it right in make sure all the gaskets are sitting Okay, we're gonna grease up some of the shaft so it doesn't get corrosion. And also here, we're gonna grease this up a little bit too. Last time I did it and it helped out a lot. And here, we're gonna clean this tube right here. Yeah, last time I greased up the shaft, um, it maintained without rust, so it does work. Put that grease around it. Put that grease around the little tube there. All right, before installing the out drive, these bolts have a lot of anti siege. We don't want to put those bolts back in like that. And I noticed the anti siege work very good. Um, but in this bolt here, the anti siege, it looks like this bolt gets very wet all the time. This time, I'm not going to use anti siege, even though it worked. On all the bolts except one um, I'm gonna use some grease that I have here once a bolt gets wet a lot especially like this one it's important uh, to lubricate it instead of using anti siege on it see how clean it is and afterward get a little bit of grease just grease up that bolt and grease it really good so that way the calcification Oh, salt water doesn't go in there. Okay, just like that. This bolt is ready to be assembled. I'm going to do that to all the bolts. All right, and don't forget to remove the old housing plastic intake clip. This right here. Very important. If you don't install this, you're not going to get the unit to work. So remove this. And install it back in here. And install this plastic in a portion clicked in very important now I'm gonna place all the bolts in
All right, I spread a little bit of grease here around the shifter. Also here on the speedometer, so it goes in very easily. You got to be careful with the speedometer because it is plastic, and you could break it easily. All right, then insert it very carefully. See the shifter there? You have to help it uh, engage in there. Put your finger and try to put it in. Alright, so finish tying all the bolts at the end. All right, remember the last long bolt goes in here. And you see the surface here that touches from the sacrificial sink. So it's making contact here with the housing of the engine, the exterior, and sacrificing all that energy uh, into the sacrificial sink. So we want to clean here and also here uh, before I install it. So when it bonds to the engine, it has a good bond. So here, just with a little blade here, I'm just going to score out whatever the uh, buildup. And I'm going to place the anode exactly how it was, which will be right at this mark right there. All right, replace the cap. Inspect the pump that there's no line back there. All right, everything's good back here. I'm gonna grease up this back here a little bit. Put some grease here, continue. And the shaft too. If I don't place grease back here, usually this will get stuck and it will be very hard to take out. That's why I like to put plenty of grease there. Place the washer back on. Put the bolt back on. Put the pin back on and the engine is ready to be tested. Prep clear! Now I feel a better stream of water. Before I was not getting this strong stream, I was getting very little. So now my impeller is working perfect. There's a piece of plastic coming out of this hole right here, melted plastic. See it right here, how big it is? It's a very strong piece of plastic that got melted right through here. And that piece of plastic, when the impeller was turning, it was taking a chunks up here of the impeller. So it only takes one time that you don't place your earmuffs right and you're gonna melt the housing. Your boat is still gonna work. But when you place the earmuffs to flush the engine, it's not gonna work and your alarm is gonna go off because something is wrong. You're losing 20% of suction because you're missing this upper portion here. It's good to investigate why things go wrong, right? So this was the issue. And as you can see that little hole there, that's exactly 
where my impellos was being chopped up from that little plastic end there. That little plastic there. It's very strong. So that's the one that was chopping up my impeller. Alright guys, and this probably will help all the boaters. If you ever notice that you had your motor running for about a minute or two, basically more towards the two minute side, and no water was going inside the housing, you're gonna melt your housing inside, the plastic housing, and that little piece of plastic is gonna come out, mess up your impeller, and then you're gonna lose 20% of your suction. You're gonna notice that when you put the muffs on and the engine overheats, it's because this is not doing good suction. That's when I noticed that I have to change my impeller. And this happened about over a year and a half ago. Because I remember, it was about almost close to two minutes, there was no water coming out and that's when I burned this uh, housing here. All right guys, I hope this video helps you on how to install the new propeller and also the housing and how to diagnose if there's a future problem like this, melting the plastic outer casing of your water pump. And the reason manufacturers make it this soft is to protect other parts of the engine, not to get ruined. So this is the first thing to go. And if you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and always navigate safe.